Okay, well, hello, my name is Maximo Cavazzani. I'm the CEO and founder of Edromax, the creators of Trivia Crack, which uh, this year was the most downloaded application in the Apple App Store. Uh, we have already 200 million uh, downloads, uh, 20 million daily active users, and we've beaten the record of being number one in the App Store in the USA, 66 days. The previous record was 32 by Draw Something in 2012. So it's a really, uh, it's a story of success. It's a really successful game. And the, the story, it's a, bit of, it's a little bit more um, special. It doesn't have the same uh, things as, as other success stories in, in the gaming world. One of the things that made uh, Trivia Crack special is that it reached those levels of downloads without any user acquisition. So it's all about the, the, the product. Edromax is a, is a company that's focused on building the best product possible. It's not that we look for uh, a market and we try to understand how to reach that market or try to see if the price or, or any, any conjecture that you can think of that other gaming companies do, we don't do it. We sit in a table and decide which is the coolest thing we can do. And we believe that drives uh, users by themselves. Let me tell you about uh, the story of the company. Um, I started the company uh, when I was very young. I was 22 years. I'm 30 right now uh, because I created the first iPhone uh, stock trading application in the world for a, a broker called Ameritrade, which is one of the biggest in the world. And that allowed me to fund the company without a, any investors. Uh, and we started doing software for, for the, the, market, the, the, the stock market especially in the new mobile world. The, that was 2008. Uh, the, the apps were st starting to, to come up. And we, we, I thought that building a company, trying to give uh, resources, um, services to, to this new world would be a great idea. But after a, a few years, I realized I didn't want to work for banks anymore. I wanted to do some uh, business to consumer. And I didn't want to do games at, uh, when I started the company. I, I thought it was just a, something very little, and, and I thought that um, the, the path was going through, going through another way. But uh, after a while, I realized that games and social networks were the only things that were really growing in the App Store. So I started to think about uh, what we could do, what we were good at doing, and I, th I thought about building a game, special, especially for the Spanish market because we, we talk Spanish in, in Argentina, and I thought, I, I view that most of the, the games were English games, especially at that time. And in 2011, I, I, re, I released the, our first game go, well, that was called Awarded, or Apalabrados in, in Spain. And that was pretty a special case, because again, Astrivia Crack was a huge success in Spain. It was the most downloaded application in Spain in 2012. It was installed in one of two phones. So in Spain, during 2012, one of two phones had this application installed. Everyone was crazy about uh, Palabrados, or awarded, um, and it made me realize that we, we had something there. I mean, though the Spanish market was not very big, I mean, it was the, the eighth market in the world, but it was, wasn't as big uh, to build a company just with that success. But I realized that with some work, we could do that in, in another market, which was 10 times a year, which was Latin America. So this was a Spanish success. And when I, when I, when I had this, 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 game, this successful game, I, I thought, well, now everything I'm going to do is going to be a success. That's what you think. When you make your first game and it's successful, you think that everything you're going to do is going to be successful. But it wasn't the case. We, re we released a second game, which was more or less successful, but not as successful as the first one. And then we released another game, which was the worst of, of the three. Then I, I stopped the ball and tried to think which was the, were the things that, um, that the, game, the initial game had and what it made it successful, and how could I transfer that uh, into an ex the same experience into Latin America. So um, we are Latin Americans. And it was strange because we were in Spanish. We were, we were 8,000 miles away from Spain. And we, were, we had the, the most successful application in Spain. But in Argentina, nobody knew us. And nobody in the rest of Latin America knew us. So it was strange, because I, I tried to figure out why was that happening. And the truth is that Latin America in 2012 
wasn't prepared for a success like, like awarded. Uh, why, why is that? Because, for example, the 3G networks weren't deployed. So if you don't have internet, uh, abundant internet in your society, then it's difficult for these games to, to, to be viral and be transferred from one person to the another. And then the amount of, of devices in, in the region wasn't as big as Spain. In Spain, you had, it was at that time the third uh, country in the world in smartphone penetration after South Korea and, um, and Singapore. But in, in Latin America, in, for example, in Argentina, where I live, uh, you didn't see people with iPhones in their hands in the streets. And you, see, you saw that in Madrid. But I, I realized that that was, that was going to change at some point. And it changed. In 2014, the same thing that you saw in, in Madrid, for example, people with iPhones in the streets, you saw in Argentina, you saw in, in Colombia, you saw it in Brazil. So we, we, we started thinking about uh, a product that would capture Latin America. Uh, Latin American is uh, it's, it's much, it's bigger and has different cultures. So it's much more difficult to capture than a single country. Everybody thinks about Latin America as a big country, right? We all speak Spanish, like that big country where we all speak Spanish and some of them speak Portuguese. But the truth is that we are, we are very different one from each other. If you take an Argentinian and a Mexican, they're more different than a Portuguese and a Spanish, right? Or an Italian and, uh, and a Dutch. Uh, we are really, really different. And w the differences are not in, in language, of course, but in the culture. And so, when, when I started thinking about which would be the game that uh, would, would be the best fit for, for Latin America, I thought, well, everybody loves trivia, right? Everybody loves to answer questions. If you go to, uh, for example, if you take TV shows, you always have a trivia TV show everywhere. In the developed countries, in the underdeveloped countries, you always have trivia because it's, a it's, it's an easy way for people to test their knowledge. But there was a problem. There were already trivia apps in the world, right? We weren't the first trivia app in the world. But the main problem with the trivia apps were content. So what, what happened to me when I played a trivia app as an Argentinian, I realized there was no way for someone to, to write questions in Spanish and the, the, for the questions to be appropriate for me and a Mexican and a, and a Spanish guy, right? So, I realized that the only way to have a, a successful trivia application in Latin America would be to have an infinite number of questions for each of the countries, which are more than 50, and th those questions should be of quality. And that was impossible to do by, uh, by the old standards. You couldn't have people writing questions for each of those countries. It's, you cannot do it. It's economically unviable. So I, I came up with an, with an idea called the trivia, the question factory. The question factory is the idea that everyone uh, gets, everyone's involved in the content, right? Not only by sending questions, and we receive one million questions per day, and that's a real number. So we receive a million questions per day, but the real problem with the questions is to separate garbage from uh, the quality content. So we came up with a system where, where people could send questions, but also could um, filter questions from other users. So if I send a question, it's reviewed by not less than 100 people before, before it goes to the, to the system. And when it's in the system, what happens is that we get, right now, for example, in Spanish, we have more than a million questions in the system, pre-approved. So it's not only about getting a lot, of, a lot of questions, but then realizing which of those are the best questions and put it in first, because the, any of our new, uh, new users will see just a few questions. So they will uh, judge the, the application based on that. So we made another system uh, inside the question factory that allowed the users to say if they like questions or not. So we, get, we got like a ranking of questions. And that ranking was divided in each of the, of the different countries. So um, if you were in Uruguay, you would see Uruguayan questions uh, that were rated by Uruguayans. So what you saw is, was like great content. People felt like we were Uruguayans in Uruguay, we were Canadians in Canada, we were uh, Americans in, in the United States. So 
that happened because we, we weren't involved in the content by ourselves. The content just uh, grows by itself. It's a very di difficult thing to do. Uh, right now, Altermax has 150 engineers in Argentina. We're a, bi a big company, or a more or less big company. What I mean is that it's not that we are th three guys in a garage. It's something that needs development, but it's something doable. And right now, we, we started, when we go to a market, for example, right now we are number one in Turkey, or, or we were number one this year in, here in the Netherlands. And we didn't, actually, we, we weren't uh, taking care of the content. The, the content take care, takes care by themselves. So that, that thing uh, made the, this application one of the most successful apps uh, ever. And then when we, when we started doing, um, w when we were started being so successful and you, you get something that haven't, haven't been done before, you start getting uh, other companies uh, interested in what you're doing. One of them is Google. We, were, we are the, the game with most impressions in the world. We made like 200 million impressions per day in our game. Uh, well, the game is at base also, uh, uh, apart from um, having in-app purchases. And Google was interested in, in solving much of our problems of having multiple networks. And we, we got the first deal they had ever uh, of uh, the first exclusivity deal we have uh, with them, and they take care of, of the ads, uh, most, uh, mostly the interstitial ads, but it's just a, one of the examples of, of other companies involved in, in what we do. The other company is Amazon. We started uh, thinking about uh, doing merchandising because of the success of the app, and Amazon allowed us to forget about distribution and just focus on getting products from, from China and be able to distribute them, to distribute them uh, through Amazon, which is one of the big, or the biggest distributor, distributor of uh, stuff in the world. Now, let me talk about what the future is. I always say that um, success is meaning, uh, meaningful only if you know what to do with it. Uh, if you ask me, uh, when I had uh, my, my first success, which was the, this iPhone trading application, I was making a, a good amount of money, but I decided to take that money and build a company to do more stuff. With that uh, company, I created my first game, which was Apalabrados, and, and everyone thought that Apalabrados was like, if you go, went to Spain in 2012, you, you thought that uh, we were making millions and millions of dollars with Apalabrados, but it wasn't the case. It allowed us to, to grow a lot uh, and to continue finding our path uh, of success, but it was, it was something that would have been meaning, meaningless if uh, we didn't have any, anything uh, for the future. Then after Trivia Crack happened the same. Yes, it was much more successful than Apalabrados, but again, it, it's, it's something that you need to take into account to, for your next step. So our next step right now, it's called Trivia Crack Kingdoms. And the idea with Trivia Crack Kingdoms is that everyone, when we started doing trivia crack, everyone wanted their own trivia crack, right? So uh, I was starting getting calls, for example, from the Red Cross saying, hey, I want to have a, a, a trivia crack for ourselves so I can teach uh, people how to save lives. Then I got calls from Time Inc. that said, hey, we want a, a, a trivia crack to, to promote our magazines and do different stuff. So I realized that trivia was something that was a, a great tool for people to communicate in a different way. So when you ask something, someone, uh, something to someone, their mind se uh, sets differently. So if I am, um, for example, Greenpeace, and I say, I, I, I post a tweet saying, the panda is the, the most endangered species of mammal in the world. Nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about tweets anymore. Yeah, I can put an image there, but again, nobody will care. But what if you are playing a game and I ask you, which is the most endangered species of mammal in the world? Then your mind sets, you're trying to win, of course, but because maybe you're, you're playing with, uh, with uh, your, your friend and you want to beat him. But then my, my mind says, hey, I don't know that. So you can answer correctly or not, but, but then that information will stick to your mind. And then I should give some more information to the user about that. So we created this product called Trivia Crack Kingdoms which is basically a platform for trivia. It's sort of like the YouTube for trivia. So anyone from Greenpeace to a fourth grade teacher can create their own trivia crack about whatever they want. It can be about math, fractions, it can be about ecology, it can be about, uh, if you're a Ferrari, you can, you can build a, um, 
a channel about uh, motors. If you are a Greenpeace, you can create one about ecology. If you are uh, a college student, you can create one about quantum physics, whatever. And then as a user, you can decide which of these uh, channels you want to follow and just focus on the content you want. One of the things that, happens, that, that happened to us before was that, let's say you get the entertainment category in Trivia Crack, and then you get a question from Harry Potter, right? So either you love it or, or you hate it. If you never heard about Harry Potter, you will hate that question. But then if you take that out, all the Harry Potter fans will, wouldn't be so uh, interested in the game. So you have a problem with content there. This, in this way, you can choose, as a user, you can choose your, your subjects and you can play and get informed by, by that trivia. We think it, it's going to be the next thing and it's doing pretty well right now. We have like uh, about a million daily active users. It's still in a better stage, but it's something really big and it's something that we believe it's going to be the next thing, not only in gaming, but also in social networks. So um, that was all about the presentation. I know that may, m most of the time you have questions about what I said. It's a really a, a big thing, and uh, I, I'm interested in what you want to know, so I'm here for your questions. Okay, if you have a question, please raise your hand. I'll bring the microphone over. Hey, thanks for the lecture. A uh, quick question. You probably heard about QuizUp uh, being signed by NBC in the US mm -hmm. for a TV show. Uh, so they launched in a couple of months. Uh, what about you? You're probably 10 times more downloads than these guys. How do they, I mean, are you going into any TV show formats or in Europe or anybody's looked at you or? I mean, yeah, uh, actually, yeah, we had ex that experience in 2014 in Argentina. We were the, uh, inside the biggest TV show there and it was really good, uh, a really good experience. You could play, uh, you could also play while, while watching the, the TV show. You could play the same question through your iPhone. And we are doing right, that right now with Televisa, which is the biggest, um, producer in the Spanish-speaking world. It's, it's uh, producing uh, a TV show that's going to be released in, in the States this year. Uh, it's, and the, the idea is that the concept will be transferred to different countries after that. So probably with the um, US success, if it's successful. Uh, <laughs> so it's, if it's that successful, we, we will try to transfer that to the rest of the world. So a question for me. Um, you're one of the few game developers that supports Windows Phone as well as Android and iOS. Would you like to, uh, did that come first or sub a second? Was it something that was Latin American specific for the penetration of the phones or just something you chose to do? Well, um, yeah, Windows Phone is, it's not only the third, but it's, I mean, it's, some companies consider it uh, not enough relevant to, to be involved. Uh, but we have a very good relationship with Microsoft. We believe that. Uh, platforms are driven by the companies, so we decided to go with Windows Phone. It's not the best version of all, of course, uh, but um, it's playable, and we believe that, uh, at, at that time, we believed that it was a, a, a great bet. Right now, it's, it's very difficult to know which, which uh, platforms are going to grow or not. When, we, when I started my, my, my first application, uh, Android was, wasn't even there when I made the iPhone trading application. So BlackBerry was number two. So it's important as a company to try to be involved in the different technologies. Right now we want to start doing uh, virtual reality and nobody knows which is going to be the best uh, device. You can say PlayStation, you can say the HoloLens. I really like the HoloLens, for example. So I, I think that in each step of this uh, development of, of technology, uh, you have like different players and it's like all the cards come to the, to the house and they are uh, Send again. So uh, again, I think with those phone, it, it's a it's a bet you want to be in. Of course, it's not going to get be the same business, but it, it's a bet you you want to be in. Okay, sure. Yes, uh, amazing presentation and excellent results that you've 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 uh, done over the years. Really good. Uh, Thank you. What, what I'm really interested in is you mentioned that you didn't have huge marketing budgets, right? That you had a quality product and you know people mm -hmm. love the product, so that's how you grew. Can you say something about how you did for the initial rollout? Yeah. Because, you know, there's 200 apps, or I don't know, and there's hundreds of apps coming out every day, right? So how did you get your very first base of, of you know, can you say something on yeah. this? Um, I know it's something difficult, difficult to, um, to believe, but the truth is that you always get users. I mean, even if you have, there are 10 users, you always get that. Um, and 
we, we just release the game. <laughs> That's the truth. We, a Palabrados happened that way. We just send it to the world, and we did nothing, and it started being successful. And with, uh, with Trivia Crack, the same. One of the things that happened with Trivia Crack was that it wasn't very successful. It was successful at the start in Spain because we were successful there. But then, for a few months before we re released the, the Question Factory, it wasn't really successful. So when we released the, 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 um, the Question Factory, it, did become, it instantly became number one in all Latin America at the same time. Right? It's something difficult to understand, but it happened that way. Uh, so we just get the, the organic users, and then, then we work with the barrel stuff. What we do is we look at the numbers, and we say, well, um, if this new feature it's, it's working better uh, virally, it's going to take this effect, and we will try to help you with this and that, and we don't make those conjectures. But the truth is that we just release it to the world. That, that's a, the plain truth. No, we're now doing, or, or we're st I'm not against user acquisition, right? Uh, that's not the message here. We weren't doing user acquisition because we didn't have any, or we didn't want to spend any money on it. And we are good at doing things, right? We're not Coca-Cola. We are not a marketing company. We're an engineering company. Uh, I'm a software engineer, and most of the people there are engineers. And we really like the product, so we focus on that. And now we are complementing with user acquisition. But the real message here is that you need to have a great product in order to promote it. The, the idea is that, that I just get a game, I copy it, and it, it, it worked with Candy Crush, so I will get 10% of that market somehow, because it's, it's an idea that it's so full of assumptions that are wrong, that it's, it never actually works. If you can have a successful product by driving a lot of money in user acquisition, but they're probably very inefficient, right? That's a point of view, of course. Uh, I mean, uh, I know that there are many counter cases in the world, but that's my point of view. So, thank you. Uh, two quick questions. Yep. The first one is business model. I heard that you guys make about 90% of your revenue through advertising. Mm -hmm. Is that right? N well, no, actually not 90, but 70%. We used to have 90 with our first game, and now it's 70, 30. We're working on the other side. And yep. the other 30 will be like uh, a f freemium items and then merchandise? Right. Uh, in a purchase, which are basically lives, coins, and now we have some cards, some, something similar to what you see gacha in the Japanese market. So with that, we, we started growing a little bit on, on the other side. OK, thank you. The second question is, you get a million questions submitted a day, and you said like 100 users will go through each question. But do you have an internal editorial team who will still review these questions? And if you do, how large is that team? Yeah. So um, the system is a little bit more complicated than that, because Let's say that you send a question and the first one, most of the questions we receive are, are like garbage, but real garbage. I'm not saying garbage in terms of the age of Justin Bieber. I'm saying garbage in terms of A, 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 nothing. <laughs> so, um, so most of the questions are just thrown away by the first users. When we started the Question Factory, it wasn't as good as right now. So we, we were like in a mixed, in, a, in an hybrid state where we had the system, and the system was just a help for the editors, right? But now, uh, the system works fully aut autonomously. What we do is when we get that to a new market, for example, right now we are number one in Denmark, and we're growing in the other uh, Scandinavian countries. And we weren't in that language before, so we have no questions. So we, we try to get people writing really good questions, or what we think are really good questions for that market. But still, they're not as good as what we are going to get from the system. You know, so. Uh, we try to do a balance between the two systems, the, the human system and the, the actual system. <laughs> uh, and, and then we, 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 we combat that, uh, the, the content in different ways depending on, on the country. Some countries require more human uh, resources and some countries don't. We don't have more than one people per language, uh, one person per language, so uh, it's not really big. Let's say right now it should be like five people and most of them or maybe 10 people, but most of them are, are not even uh, full-time employees of Adamax. They just uh, help us that we, we get. So, yeah. oh, okay, we have time for one more question. Does anybody have a question? Sure, last question. Hi. Um, you mentioned that uh, your first game was success, but your next two were less successful. Um, you've talked about a lot of what made um, this game successful. Can you talk about any of the mistakes you felt you made in those other two and how much luck played into it? Yeah. 
I think the first, I mean, the, the, the first mistake, I, I believe that false assumptions are, the, problem, are the, the base of the mistakes you make in a company. I mean, generally in life, but in a company, it's more, <laughs> more important. So the first assumption I made uh, wrong in my second game was everything I'm going to do is going to be successful, right? It's that how you feel when you are successful with your first, the first thing you do. Uh, the other thing was that I thought, hey, we have the distribution, we are number one, let's do just another game, let's copy another game, uh, let's use the same formula uh, and try to get the same results. And the problem is that the world's changing too fast. So things that work today are not going to work in the future. So um, the, the second game was just a I mean, it was not, nothing new. It wasn't in, had no innovation. It was a better game because we were better engineers and we, we, were, we had better designers and the game is better and whatever, but still didn't have that impact of the first game. If I, start, I, if I made that same game that I made in 2011 right now, it's, it, it's not going to be successful. So with our third game, which was Bingo Crack, the, the, the mistake I think I made was being too far away from what I was or, or what the company was good at, which was social games. It, wasn't, it was a, um, a type of game that wasn't in, the, in the, um, the lines of what we were doing. One of the things that um, make our games special is that the amount of the technology they have. For example, the chat is one of the better chats in the world, in the gaming world. But if you compare it with uh, Facebook Messenger, I mean, you cannot send pictures, you cannot create groups, you cannot do ma many of the things that, that you can do with other messengers. So we, we spend like a year at least 20 people working just on the chat. And we're releasing that right now. You will be able to send pictures, you will be able to say, uh, to, to create groups. So being able to understand what you are and what you're good at and try to build a product upon that, uh, it's important. So one of the things, for example, if, you are, if we are building a new game is trying to use the technologies where we are good at. For example, the chatting technology or, or the social technology that we use, the registration process, uh, the way, uh, the monetization si uh, system we have. We try, you, you need to try to be an innovation, but just one thing at a time, right? I mean, it's a general concept, but that's more or less uh, what I can take from, from the mistakes I made. I, I tell you right now. Okay, so, well, big round of applause for Max. Thank you very much. Awesome thank presentation. You. Thank you. Great job. Thank you.